Over 500 Trans Ams this weekend here at the Trans Am Nationals in Dayton, Ohio. Great turnout. It's been a lot of fun. It always is each year. It's a great show. Generation 1993 through 2002. There's a lot of first gens here this year. Notice there are a lot of first gens this year, which is great to see them. third gens here this year really nice color I actually like that brown with the gold no t-tops some really nice really nice ones turbo Trans Am those were a hot car still are to this day all right, I got this is a, a friend of mine, Mike. Carl, His 84 Campbell. is just a nice up, example. You know and it is my favorite so color combo. We'll of course, black and gold. You better get to it. Jake really nice car.
455. Got a 50th anniversary, 1976 special edition right here. That was the 50th anniversary of Pontiac, 1976. And they did a commem commemorative year of the on the Trans Am. I'll just go down this row here and let you see these cars. 1975, the only difference between 74 and 75 is what? I'll answer that for you. These were down here in 74 and 75, they brought them up here. Car number 53, Dan Irwin, in the windshield on the deck, and your left window open so the judges can get to him. Here we go. We've got 1979. That was a different change to the front fascia. And um, they opened the headlights up and split them and put the induction in the front lower valence center rather than up here in the top. This is a uh, great row of examples of 79s this is an 80 here i kind of like the orange screaming chicken on the blue it sets it off it's a good contrast oh look at that red interior that is really nice scott 79 this is a really nice example he uh, has done a lot to it this is a really, really nice 79 Trans Am. He has 17 inch snowflakes that he rides on it too, but he brought it here to the Trans Am Nationals with these uh, Eagle wheels. Actually, I'm sorry, these are the Ink Eye wheels out of Greenwood, Indiana. Some great looking collars here this year. 10th anniversary, 1979. Let's see if it's a four speed, it's a 403. And right off, how can you tell? Well, Oldsmobile never put the inlet for your oil on the valve cover like a Pontiac or a Chevrolet. They put theirs up here. So when you raise the hood, obviously you can tell right off that that's a 403. And uh, there wasn't much uh, horsepower difference between the two. There's some say there's a little bit of difference you can do to um, upgrade the 403 versus the 400, but really the 400, the sky's the limit on that. You can do all kinds of modifications. A lot of people are uh, taking a, a 400 block and putting a stro stroker crank and some bottom end reinforcement on the mains and a cam and they're getting a 461 cubic inch out of it. So this is a great example. Let's see if it is a four speed. It is not, but I highly respect this car because everybody knows this silver wears terrible back in the day. And this is, uh, this is weathered well. Really nice example. Solar gold. So there's some uh, feedback I'll give you on solar gold, some information on it. So um, obviously this one's in great shape. I believe it looks like it's had a repaint, but uh, solar gold was a hard color that they, that General Motors uh, worked with. So it would fade. And so a lot of times you'll see a, a original survivor solar gold that will have, you know, maybe the sail, the spoiler uh, sail panel is a, a different color than this quarter or this door or, or what have you. But a lot of times the solar gold would fade and, and start changing in colors. But if, it, if you do see that, then you know it's pretty much original. This one's in great condition, great example. It looks to have a repaint, but hey, that's, that's awesome. They've done a great job with it. And obviously you have a special edition here. I believe this may be a friend of mine's. Nope, I don't know Rick Glore uh, from Florence, Kentucky. But that's a great example. Um, the SE came with uh, 15 by sevens, and the way you can tell is there's no lip 
the 15 by 8 has the offset lip here. So great example of a, what everybody said a bandit car, but these are the special editions, 1977. Looks like a special edition 79 with a Pontiac 400. Let's see if it's a four speed car. It's an automatic. Automatic. Look at there, you got the CB antenna, CB radio antenna. These are fun cars. These are great cars. 1977 special edition right there. How can you tell a 77 from a 78? Just real quickly, go up to the car. Pontiac coined the honeycomb. So you know in 77 was honeycomb. In 78, they went to crosshatch. So it's X's. That's a quick way to reference 77 from a 78. SCs. I won't go through all the SCs. I've said enough about them, but there's a 50th anniversary Pontiac Trans Am. Some people have already left. Some people leave on Saturday, but today's awards day, so we'll we'll be here till three o'clock, which comes fast. The show moves very very fast. There's a lot going on over the whole weekend, so you got to know where to go and where to be at what time. So. Hey, look at there, 69 Trans Am. Wonder if it's a Ram Air 3 or 4 car. Uh, it doesn't say, but I suspect. Yeah, this is a great little, this is a great example there. Collector's Edition, fourth generation. You got a Bluebird. So the, the story on these is a, a lot of the uh, marketing came in with uh, the Trans Am, the Firebird, and they actually marketed these towards women, believe it or not, um, to get the women to buy them directly through uh, Pontiac. So they made what was called an Esprit model, and they named this one the Bluebird. They made one in yellow. Obviously, they called it the Yellow Bird, and they made one in red. And there's one over this way I might be able to video if I get over there. It is the Red Bird. Uh, there's a rare Red Bird here that's a four-speed car, and uh, if I get a chance, I'll go over there and video it. We got a Macho TV, TA right here, so this was set up as a, uh, I mean, a vintage race car, basically. Um, this this was a circuit car that was done through the SCCA. Uh, Macho TA, Macho was a company that they would send off, kind of like SLP, back in the 70s, and uh, you could, you know, go out and buy a Macho TV, TA, and it was all set up. Very similar to the Herb's, Herb Adams, set up uh, with uh, VSC, very special equipment. So this is a great example of a Macho TA right here. Great looking collar combination. This, I believe, is Tom Chilcoat's. Actually, I take it back, this, this is not. This is not Tom's. A friend of mine in the Indianapolis Firebird Club. But this is Nocturne Blue, is a beautiful collar, one of my favorite blues in 79. Got some uh, 67, 68, 69. Pro touring look there. Got a third gen. Some of my favorite years. These are awesome cars. Right out of the gate, they handled amazing. This is a 5.0 car. This is an 87. 87 had the ground effects and they were collared and it really set the car off well. We're gonna go through this really quick. So we have a 97 Ram Air. How can you tell it's a 97 from a 98 with the different hood? Well, the hood was different. Ram, uh, 97 was the first WS6 package with the Ram Air hood. And it was really sleek. And these are hard to find in this condition. So this is a great example. 1969 Trans Am. Only 697 of these built. Nice example of a convertible yellow I, I'm saying it's a 91, let's go check. 92, I was close. 91, 92 were identical, so hard to tell the difference between them. And what are these? They were nicknamed Spock Ears back in the day, and they still have that nickname today. People reference the 91, 92 as a Spock Ear, because they flip up like an ear. That was the uh, ground effects back then. Great modded third gen right there. Beautiful, look at that chrome engine. 
That chrome is amazing. Man, they got that shining really good. They've took some time to clean that. That paint job is beautiful. It's got some great little details too. If you pay attention here, look at this. Very nice. Man, that is a beautiful 79. Okay, that is just a beautiful car. And this one is Tom's, a good friend of mine, Tom Chilcote from Indianapolis, Indiana. He's done a lot of lot to this car, and uh, I think he deserves an award or some recognition somewhere because this car is amazing. The paint is brilliant on it. Interior, this is a very clean, nice running car. I mean, and he's got a really rare CB radio in it that I would love to have. Maybe someday he'll let loose of that. He'll call me. <laughs> Tom, if you're listening. <laughs> really nice modified Trans Am here. Another 96, 97, I'm guessing. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a 97. Really chromed out, very clean, looks great. A lot of accents, a lot of tasteful mods on that car as well. And we have a pewter convertible. They didn't make very many of these. The pewter was a low production number to begin with, but also convertibles on top of that. Hey everybody, I don't think I'm gonna get through all these cars, so I apologize. There's a lot more here than it's in my videos, so you'll just have to come out here and see this. Hey, some friends of mine. <laughs> Got some nice wheels on this uh, third gen over here. I believe this is an 83, maybe an 82. We'll see, it is an 82. First year for the third gen. Really cool. And there's a cool story on Norwood, NorwoodLegends.com. Check it out. Hey, Don Johnson. Hey, man. <laughs> this guy right here is a special guy. He, he applied the last uh, piece of uh, material on the assembly line at Norwood. And this is Don's car right here. He's got a great looking Firebird Trans Am. This is a really nice example of a GTA. That's an awesome car. I love the bright red. Yeah, Don's is a really good combo. That blue just pops with the ground effects. That's a really nice car and I'm glad he has it. He did the Firebird Fest this year and the pre previous years and he said it's an awesome thing. I'm gonna actually do it and try to do it next year. So um, yeah, Don is, is, is a great guy. Um, Google about Don Johnson or go to NorwoodLegends.com and check that out. He uh, he has quite a story. He worked in the Norwood, Ohio plant um, where they built all the F bodies at that time. And before they closed the plant, uh, he was the person that put the last part on the assembly line of the very last IROC Z Camaro. And there's a great story about that. Um, you can Google Philip Boris. So we're gonna try to get through all these cars, like I said, but boy, it's gonna be hard. Like I said, there's some empty spots, people have left, but that's okay. You'll still see some nice examples of cars. All right, we're in the fourth gens. Got a collector's edition there. Really nice teal, blue color. Black is always great. I've always liked black. I had a 1996, brand new in 96, that I ordered through a personal uh, um, pet program at General Motors. Loved that car, but it was time to get rid of it lifestyle change hey we've got a uh, 2002 collector's edition convertible here really nice example that's a beautiful car love the stripe kit from the factory got a daytona pace car here love the blue wheels everything about it this car actually came from the factory with white interior and it just is really neat this is a 30th anniversary car yeah this is a really nice Love the decal kit from the factory. So cool. A nice white convertible, white on white. Look at there. Beautiful. Nice fourth gen. Some really nice cars out here. Yeah, I, I videoed this uh, red uh, NASCAR pace car at the Tip City. I'll go over there. Really nice. Love the honeycombs. This car is beautiful. I love how they decked this out. Red, these actually came 
from the factory white, but I love what he's done to this. It's got the Recaro seats. Look at that motor. That is impressive. Man, I bet that puts out some horsepower. Headers, intake, heads. I'm sure he's uh, done some things internally as well. 81 from Marion, Illinois. Very, very nice. Look at those Recaro seats, super rare. Nice car. Looks like he's done a few runs. Look at there, snowman run, bandit run, bandit run, power tour, power tour. Awesome car. All right, everybody, 25th anniversary car. This is a really nice, nice fourth gen. This was a, a, a really step out that they did where they did the white on white and all the white interior and the stripe to kind of commemorate the 1970-71 that's uh, a second gen. They did a great job. This is awesome. 25th anniversary right there. I may have to close this video up. I don't want to miss. They have an online or a live auction inside, so I don't want to miss that. I always do pretty good on the bids in there and see uh, what they have. So I'll just kind of scope through here and let you see what you can see. And like I said, there's some empty spots, but they were full yesterday. That's kind of cool. You put a, a screaming chicken on a fourth gen. Really nice. There's a modified pewter. This car's awesome as well. A lot of second gens, thirds, fourths. There's an SLP box. So, really nice. We've got some uh, Firehawks over here. I'm gonna try to get over there before I stop this video. Steve Hamilton's cars are way back here. He brought a lot of 73s this year, 1973. You got a Brewster Green out there. It's awesome. You got all the fourth gen original unmodifieds over here. This is a friend of mine's vintage race replica he's done a great job on it tim he lives here in ohio and it's a great looking great looking car he's done uh, some uh, amazing things to it it's uh it's really set up it looks like it's ready for the circuit tim Hare's a great guy <laughs> he's an aztec owner well he was too so that's, that's how we got together on things he, he had a yellow Aztec and, and sold it. And Tim, if you're listening, you know you should have never sold that. <laughs> we got a nice row of modifieds here. So I'm gonna make my way back here to, to the Firehawks. Oh, before I do that, let's go over here to the Fireams. So Herb Adams um, obviously raced for Pontiac. Um, he designed and came up with Fiream. And this, these were, uh, really the vintage years of tuners. These were tuner cars back in the 70s. So they uh, they really equipped them with you. I mean, you can see the reinforced here, uh, very, very special equipment, obviously VSE. So I think Chris Harris already left, but there were three of them here last night. Some great, nice first gens. Look at these, beautiful. Really nice modified. Night Rider kit, how about that? And he's talking. From Youngstown, Ohio. Look at there. It's pretty sweet. Like I said in an earlier video, check out Night Rider Historians. My good friends Joe Huth and AJ Palmgren. They run that and uh, they do a wonderful job of really spending a lot of time on the history and investigating all of the major details and the behind the scenes footage. They also own one of the actual Knight Rider movie cars. Third gen Fire Am. VSE's making a lot of third gen parts for for those cars. This is a good friend of mine in, uh, from my hometown, Jason Glaze. He has an amazing third gen, him and his dad. His dad spent a lot of hours on this, and uh, it's uh, been something Jason's been able to enjoy throughout the years, and it's an amazing third gen. Look at this interior. It is incredible shape. I love the B&M shifter, too. 
has a LS3 swap, tastefully done. Really nice car, 1984. I love how they left the outside original looking. Looks great. So every one of these cars are owned by someone pretty well known. All you have to do is Google Steve Hamilton Trans Am and you will find all the information about Steve. Steve Hamilton started collecting in the, I'd say in the 80s. Um, and uh, he has some amazing stories. This guy lives and breathes Firebird Pontiacs all day long. And uh, this car here is very special. Um, it had a custom paint job and that is original back in the 70s. Original custom paint job, I should say. Um, this is a 69 Trans Am that's a, a great riding car. I rode to Pontiac, Illinois at the Pontiac Museum, ran by Tim Dye in this car from Indianapolis to Pontiac, Illinois, and uh, it rode spectacular. Here's his Brewster Green. This is just a great example of his cars. Uh, he's just brought some nice ones. He brings them every year, but Steve is known for having the world's largest running collection of Firebird, Pontiac Firebirds, all, you know, and he has various Firebirds. So um, just Google Steve Hamilton. So this is, I believe this is the work in progress. This is uh, Pro-Am Trans Am. These are all work in progress. We've got work in progress over here. And, uh, my good friend Scott Shield over here. He's running through taking some shots. So let's get over here to the uh, Firehawks. These are amazing, amazing cars here. So uh, Pontiac sent these off to SLP, which was a engineering performance network. Um, and they would uh, basically engineer these cars to perform I mean, they were street legal race cars, basically. Firehawks are really, really rare, especially nowadays. They didn't build a whole number, a lot of them. Um, so here we have a red one, it's a great example. Here we have a, a blue, beautiful blue. And uh, then you have the 10th anniversary Firehawk right here. This is a obviously a convertible, as you can see, in the black and gold accents. It's a really, really great example beautiful car and you have the burnt orange here starburst and a convertible the convertibles are super rare hard to find very very awesome cars very quick very very quick so we've got the first era of the fourth gen firehawk uh, this is a 94 and um this was done by SLP as well, and this was uh, an amazing color comb combination. The wheels really set it off. It really looks good. These are super rare, super rare, especially a six-speed. Great looking car, awesome example. I know I keep saying that, but it is. These are all awesome examples of cars. So yeah, so there is a Trans Am book put out and this car is actually in the, the Trans Am book that I'm standing in front of. So um, he has some awesome literature about the car as well back here, window sticker. Uh, Pontiac Motor Division was the only General Motors division that carried and still held all their microfish and kept all the documentation. All the other divisions, not so much. And you can get that done at Pontiac Historical Services, phsservices.com. And uh, they will set you up with a window sticker and PHS document your car, which makes the car's value even go up because it authenticates every option on the vehicle. Nice modded, lowered 2002 Trans Am in pewter. It's got an SLP box, it's lowered very nicely, probably BMR suspension. Got an excellent looking formula here, that, that blue is amazing. 
nice 17 inch year ones on it love the formula along the bottom so yeah these are this is a modified class here so collector's edition mounted with some wheels and eyelids <laughs> really nice 30th anniversary so yeah and then you have all your original class back here all all original fourth generation firebirds 2002 was the last of the breed so they stopped production in 2002 uh, i forget the production numbers i believe at the trans am level was like 19,000 and something in 2002 but you know it's a shame pontiac stopped but they did and there's a story about that you can just google about that there's some things being that have been said the reason why but the truth is out there so you can check it out we have a concourse judging over here if your car is concourse level you can have it actually judged in this tent area here so i just wanted to say thanks for watching i'm going to wrap this video up so we've had an awesome weekend we look forward to 2024 thanks for watching guys